right, last night, how nervous were you throwing down the first celebratory pitch at the baseball? If I said to you that I've now got a new sporting highlight that eclipses my first test of the Wallabies when I scored a try against the British Lions, um, I'd be pretty close to the mark. When they rang us, where the, of course, you probably know, the Auckland Tuatara played the Brisbane Bandits. I'm sure it's been on the uh, most front pages in the first game of the season. And uh, they rang me, and what an honour it was. And I went out there, and he introduced me to the crowd, the uh, ground announcer. Uh, And here we have, uh, from Triple M radio station, Greg, is it Martin? Greg Martin. No, no, so (laughs) stuck. All 28 people. <laughs> I'm not big. I'm not big in the baseball uh, uh, crowd. For Danny, uh, are you? All 28. Pe- all 28 people broke into instantaneous applause. I then threw. Oh, geez, I gave it some heat. I threw my knuckleball mm-hmm. straight over over the plate, and uh, geez, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they offered me a contract. So there I was. Opened the season for uh, baseball. We did you guys six nil in the end too. Sorry about that. Tuatara, I'll tell you what I love about it. Um, it's one of the best family-friendly events to go along and watch, you know, because they, you know, they said... good baseball. It's brilliant, mate. I love baseball for a start, but what they do is in here in New Zealand is they set it up so you've got bouncy castles, all the kids, there's a compound, a right. walled compound to play in. You can leave them alone to run around, and then you, know, you can sit there, have a couple of beers and watch. Mate, I'm a big baseball freak. I know that we don't know everything about each other, but I've been oh. to the States. I've been to about 10 different ballparks. I don't really have a teammate. Oh. I, I, I just love the sport. Oh, right. Well, you know what they had there last night? They probably imported it from the States. They had these hollowed out baseball bats. You could drink beer out of them. Right. It was incredible. <laughs> the beer bat. The, the beer, beer bat. bat. Oh, that's cool. Now, listen. <laughs> what I do love about baseball, though, was, oh, of course, you know this, every time the ball goes into the crowd, yeah, you get yeah. to keep the ball. Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? Why can't we do that with cricket? Like, if you hit a six, can you imagine how much better T20 and Big Bash and all that would be if every over they just got a new ball out and just threw that one if it hadn't been hit for six? Keep, if the ball goes into the crowd, same with footy. Yeah, footy is tripping. Yeah, crowd, keep it. it. It's yours. Yeah. You own it. We've got a couple of spare ones here. There you go. You hang on to that one. Well, okay. how many kids? Oh, well, that's what they say. And in, in, in America, it's you know, it, it's they call it America's pastime. But the whole thing is bring a kid to the baseball, so they all take their their mitts and they all want to catch mitts. a ball. Yeah. yeah. And look, we actually did it. There was a rugby league test back in the early nineties in Palmy North between you a lot kangaroos and the Kiwis, and the crowd did yeah. it every time the ball went and it was up the jumper. Mate, they they actually they ran out. They just every they stole the balls, <laughs> but they had to stop. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the greatest sports stories. Uh, the other thing is, is that if you go back to, and there's an ESPN doco about this, if you go back to 2001, uh, after 9-11, the first big uh, gathering again of crowds in New York was the World Series between the Yankees yeah. and the Diamondbacks. And President Bush went out and threw a pitch, you know, the, the first pitch, uh, and he was out the back uh, practicing for half an hour because he wanted to throw it over the plate, wanted to throw a strike. So did you warm up the arm at all or not? They didn't give me an opportunity. It was just straight on. It was just straight up without any roll in the arm. And I do throw the ball to my dog, Ted, my Kelpie. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do a bit of throwing. So I was job ready, mate. It was just okay, magnificent. Sweet. But oh, what? Oh, I, I do love baseball. Yeah, it's an easy game to watch, mate. It's really easy to follow. It's it's over in three hours. You, you know, you're encouraged to, you know, drink beer and eat hot dogs. I mean, what? I'm sorry. That's right. You know? That's what I did. I got a beer bat and a big hot dog and just went, this is mighty. I get yeah. home and Mrs. Marta says, uh, do you need dinner? I said, no way. I've been to the baseball, babe. Mm. So, oh, no. I'll go anytime. We're their radio station, so I had to talk it up this morning. Hey, but the only problem is they play four games. So they go, go, the Bandits, our team, are playing your blokes to Atara. Four times over the weekend. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah they I find they have, that incredible. Yeah, they have a series. Uh, all right, then. Greg Martin, Triple M out of Brisbane. Other sports, yeah. the Women's World Cup, probably not as big time your place as it is here. Eden Park, Greg, for a women's rugby game, 45,000 there tomorrow night. How's that? Oh, that's, that's cool. That's fabulous. Yeah. I didn't know that. That is really cool. Yeah, brilliant. It, are you playing England? I haven't no, we, yes, yes, we are. We're playing the Red Roses. They've won 30 in a row. Get these for stats, mate. 25 of their 38 tries have been scored by their forwards. 24 of those 38 line-out drives. That's how tough this is going to be to win. How tough, how exciting this is going to be to watch. Um, we should just play it in the 22 by the sound of it. The yeah, rest of the field yeah. doesn't get used. <laughs> yeah, exactly, mate. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, but that's incredible. 45,000. That's the biggest tick for women's sport I've seen for some time because we, we have AFLW, we have NRLW over here, and it's just not getting the numbers yet because the quality's not there. But women's rugby, the quality's there. We all know that. It is at that level, mate. And that's what, you know, and I know that there's a, there's a mass media hype train here, which is just so gushy and disingenuous. Yeah. And it's actually quite patronising, I think. Look, there are, look, the Super Rugby Women's isn't at that level. The NPC, which is the Farah Palmer Cup, isn't at that level. At the elite level, we've got a couple of athletes uh, in our back line, Ruby Tour and Portia Woman, who are just fantastic to watch. They're, just, they're, they're as good as any, yeah. any pin your ears back winger that, that you've seen in recent times. Oh, so, so what, what they've got to do this sport is, you know, stop yelling and telling everyone that they've got to watch it. Everyone is, great, is, is at the moment in this country is sort of is moving towards it. Somehow they've got to capture this afterwards when the euphoria dies down a bit. How do you actually keep, you know, people have come into your shop, sampled your product. How do you keep them? How do you keep them coming back? That's going to be the big question. Well, I, I do appreciate that finally, as you say, they can't convince us of this quality when there's not because we spot BS a mile away, mm-hmm. sports fans. But when we finally get a good product, i.e. women's sevens is a magnificent yes, product. True. And now, at, the, at this point in the end, women's rugby is a wonderful product. So, mate, yeah, stop with the nonsense. Just wait. We'll all catch on when you get better. That's all I've got to say. Women's sport, women's tennis. I love watching women's yeah, tennis. Yeah, same. Good. Same. Watch, I, love the sw- I love the swimming. I love watching the bow. Many of these Olympic sports are brilliant. All right. As the, as the rugby league draw came out, do you know what I can't understand about these sports and the people that run them? Rugby league, the opening match, why wouldn't you have um, Brisbane against the Dolphins? Why wouldn't you have that? Why wouldn't you have a repeat of the grand final as your opening match? Why, what, what morons run these things? Uh... I, I think well, I asked that same question this morning. I think every club, they go, what are your top three games that you want to see? Like, uh, to understand a few, Penrith playing Parramatta. I know it's a replay of the grand final. That's the Battle of the West. Now we'll have the Battle of Brisbane. They love these battles. Um, so they all got to nominate what game would you like to see in what week. So that's part of what it's about. And she's going to be a funny funny competition. There's 17. So there's going to be a buy every week. So mm. I, don't, I don't like that caper week. Teams have got to play every week. Don't let your fans get uh, separated from their tribalism. You've got to play every bloody week, but oh, they'll work it out. What about the Rugby League World Cup? You've been following that. We're Absolutely. worried about you, Blake. Yeah, look, and look, we're a bit we, worried about the size of your forwards. Well, we haven't played well. That's the thing. And against Fiji, you know, last week the quarterfinal again didn't play well. You kind of expect us to have a game in, in us at some stage, and this effectively is going to be our final. Uh, you would have enjoyed the fact that the organisers already booked our guys on the flight out on Sunday. I, we did notice. <laughs> we did notice. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so right. what what does coach coach Madge Maguire, the coach of the New Zealand uh, Rugby League team, does he put the boarding passes on the wall in the dressing room and just look at that? Yeah. Look at what they think of it. Yeah. That's the motivating yeah. factor. Yeah. They don't think we are. They don't think we're going to win this. So I bet you. I bet you. You guys beat us. Come on. Because we are so far. Our problem with our kangaroos. They're so far up themselves. They think they are so good that they'll they'll they won't turn up ready. They'll go, oh yeah, we'll just uh, we'll, we'll front up without having to put any commitment in. I bet you, you guys beat us. All right, so you know you've got Tarpany, okay, a reasonable sized human being. You've got Asafa, yeah. a reasonable sized human being. Uh, you've got, got Nelson, Fisher, yeah. Fisher Harris, not a not a small right. man. Can you imagine? I mean, you've played confrontational sport. These guys are just running at you. They're not trying to avoid you, Greg. They're running at your face, wanting you to front on tackle them. I mean, I, I, I find that quite scary. Oh, no. The, my favourite noise in the whole world, Martin, is, and even at my age, is still air leaving another man <coughs> when you hit them. Um you play body contact sport, that's what you love. So, no, I, mate, that's a challenge. To hit bigger men and hurt them is such a wonderful thing. I remember it nicely as I feel my knees and my head and everything else. It's such a wonderful thing. No, that's what it's all about, hitting other men at high speed, big men at high speed, and if you can pull it off, you're good. If you don't, you're probably unconscious and you can't remember it. So when you score the try against the Lions, is scoring a try like scoring a football goal? Do you just get this massive wave of adrenaline and euphoria and stuff? I'll never forget it, Martin. I'll never forget it. I went. It was a uh, it was a move from a scrum. Okay, so set piece move. Nick Far Jones dummy to Michael Liner, dummy to Tim Horan, sent a pass across Jason Little. I went over around the last fifteen metres untouched, dotted the ball down with one hand. It was just and then just went. My God, how easy to test rugby. Uh, and then I encountered David Campese in my 
after we finished soon afterwards. So you one hand as well. You dotted down it with one hand. You know, oh. didn't didn't dive. No diving. No diving. No nothing. Yeah, never forget it. But until of course the baseball throw last night. Yeah, until the baseball throw. People, yeah, that obviously. was also huge. Finally, yeah. then the T20 World Cup, you, you know, c- country doesn't care about it, does it? It's England versus Pakistan. Now, we're all hoping for no. India versus Pakistan. That's not happening. So, what, is Australia tuned off this? Uh, yeah, you know what it's like? It's like when you get home from work and you just want to take it easy and you look out in the backyard and all the other kids from the neighbourhood are playing in your backyard and your kids aren't even out there. You go, what's, what's going on? What are all these people doing here at my place? So, that's how we're treating the World Cup final. Like the problem is, I don't know if you know, and you probably don't care now, New Zealand's been knocked out. Pakistan will play England at the MCG. It holds 95,000. It's supposed to rain heavily at the MCG on Sunday. It's supposed to rain a bit on Monday. That was the reserve day if it gets washed out. Do you realise that about one kilometre away from the MCG is a place called Marvel Stadium that yeah. has a roof? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, they, didn't, they had the capacity to throw a cricket pitch in but didn't. So... What are they doing? <clears throat> yes. oh, I can't wait anyway. to see a rained out final and then a rule book like cricket does where they find obscure 18 subsection C part one. Oh, yeah. you're first in the alphabet. You win. But you can't tell me. It's the World Cup final, okay? It's slated to be on Sunday. It's howling down rain, let's say, in Melbourne. It's howling down rain in Melbourne and they go, oh, we can't play. Why can't they play? Every other sport gets wet. Why can't... And it'd be funny. A bowler runs in, falls over. Oh, that's a great... Oh, I'd love to watch that. Yeah, if things, well, why can't cricket... Why can't cricket be played in the rain? Why are they so soft that they have to... Oh, wait until it's all stopped. Now, get into it. We're paying your money.